She's super sweet. So this is Olivia. Bring her right to me. In these types of cases, it's gonna be a little bit different because we're not dealing with, we have a really balanced, secure dog that needs help on obedience. We're dealing with a dog that actually thinks they're in immediate danger and they could potentially die at any moment. <laughs> so of course we know that's not gonna happen, but we have to be empathetic towards that. So what I'm noticing guys is she's becoming a little bit more comfortable as I go. So watch, watch what I'm looking for and what you guys should be looking for too is she's becoming a little bit more interested in her surroundings versus suspicious. So you'll see her go, hey, what's this? What's that? Instead of like Mr. Krabs. After practicing basic leash pressure with Olivia and her owners, they're on a way better path than they were before. You're seeing more confidence, you're seeing Liv starting to open up and give me affection, and the owners and Liv both feel more confident. Now the next step, which would be the biggest hurdle, is getting her out into public good, and starting to train in realistic environments. Up to give me love, yay, good girl. That was good for her, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness, did we build some confidence or what? Where's a girl? Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you for joining me here today. Today is second day in Richmond, Virginia. We're in this awesome little outdoor mall. So we're gonna meet with these guys and we're gonna work on their big thing, which was going out in public and working in a, in a distraction like this. That's all they wanted out of their dogs was to be able to go out, heal them nicely, walk them nicely without reactivity on the leash and uh, not pulling them all over the place. So we're gonna go try day two and see how we do. She's always been super timid. Take her anywhere, we can't walk her, we can't do anything. Yeah. Um, just, she like puts her feet in the ground and just like, I'm not going anywhere, um, which is, yeah. Oh, and since it's obviously uh, November, the Christmas tree has to go up. Let's just bring these guys through. She's gonna be working on environmental confidence building. So we're gonna be not asking a lot of obedience of her. Okay. So not asking her to sit a lot, not asking her to heal a lot. Let her explore. It's about overexposure, desensitization, making a very once very scary place, not scary. And then with her, Miss Asher, you're gonna be intermittently working on obedience, heal, just basic heal, okay. sit, break. And we'll just try to make this experience the best we can. A lot of corrections on her. Just kind of nah, just let her, let her do her thing. Let her build confidence. Okay. Like I said, like it's more important for me, for her, because she's so insecure, um, to just do her thing. Um, if, if we feel like it's becoming a negative thing where she's trying to escape a bunch yeah. of times, for now, let her be a dog, explore, build some confidence. And, and, and really the goal is, is to get her and sniffing something so she takes her mind off of her nervousness. See how she's sniffing? Yeah. So if she's sniffing, she's not concerned about her, her demise at any minute, which is normally what she's like. Yeah. So that's what I mean is just like letting her go out and sniff. That's really good for her. Yeah, see if she'll get up there. <gasps> good girl. Good job, Liv. Good girl. So like doing stuff like this to get her, see how her tail just wagged? Yeah. So. This is good. I mean, but I'm under the assumption of like her being normally terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, good. So she's doing a lot better. Yeah, okay, cool. You're out, just getting her up and just getting her mind off of anything else. What a good girl. And just letting her just see how she's like looking at, um, you know, strollers and people. And she's not like normally when we were out for a walk with her prior, she would growl a lot. And now she's got some people walking around. So store number one is pretty good. Uh, I forgot to mention too, like, so a couple tips when you're in public places with a dog that you're a little unsure of is just when you go in, um, 
head on a swivel, so making sure that like if there's a person coming down this aisle, you're cutting, you know, you're cutting away, just being conscious of that, because they're in there to shop and like we're in there to like desensitize, which is you know we have to be respectful. Um, and then the other thing is too is like if somebody does approach you with like, hey, can I pet your dog? Normally we see a lot of people, especially in big stores, like can I give your dog a treat? And if your dog's like not sure about people and it could possibly make it like a negative experience, best thing to do is just tell people that your dog's in training. Um, because what that'll do is it'll, it'll not say like, my dog's not friendly or my dog's not like overly friendly. It just means like, um, no thanks. And a lot of people respect that. Sometimes if you go, um, if you say anything other than that, then, you know, it'll get kind of hairy. So anyway, when, uh, when you get a dog that is, you know, a little nervous or, or so whatever, just also make sure that you're keeping your, you're conscious of your leash length just because of that. Like these people are out here shopping, not paying attention, like what dog you have, like oh, just make sure that like when people pass, like you're conscious that if she has four feet of leash and that person's two feet away from you, there's an opportunity for failure. And we want this whole exposure desensitization process to be as positive as possible for you guys and the dogs. So just make sure that you're conscious of those things as well. Cool. So see how she's like, do you see how she's like exploratory? It's good. What you think, Liv? What you think, Liv? Tails wagging. What's the difference between now and how she was? Well, she would not even be in fight or fight right now. Yeah. What would we be exploring? Like, right. And right now she's tails going yeah. Yeah. and she's inquisitive. Like she's like, oh, what's that? What's this? And she's having a good time. But like for me, I think like the big, the, the significant difference between now and then, not just like what we're seeing, but why it happened was because of the lack of control and yeah. like the confidence that she had before. It was so crazy and now that we've got we've gotten some structure with her and we're healing her and we have the ability to pull the reins back i think she knows that which is making her more confident so make sure like when you're ready to heal her you say her name ask your heal and then you heal her and then you say okay break and then you make it really defined don't have it kind of cloudy don't have it gray at all just be really like hey we're working okay now we're not okay we're working because when you get this much environmental stuff going on you're like fourth partied you know, it's like bringing a kid to, D to Disney. It's like, you don't matter as much anymore. So just make sure that you're aware and conscious of that, that you're in, the more that your environments change, uh, will work against you. you, your leverage will go down. So let me show you like, like a demonstration of how you'd want to do that in a distraction like this. You just, like I said, say the dog's name, ask the dog to do the behavior. Asher, heal. Good, create your line of where, good heal. Ah. I'll turn. Good heel, Asher. Good job. This is really big for her. You know, she's out in public. See how she's watching me? I Slow down. She slows down with me. Beautiful turn. Ah, ah, ah. Good. Just giving her a little verbal check, if you will. Asher, same thing. Sit. Good. So name. Boom. Because you have to be like, because she's, okay, break. Because she's constantly like smells, birds, uh, people, like new environments, new, new new surfaces everything is so new for her for us we're walking through a brick thing you know for her this is like oh my gosh so just make sure that you're like asher do this asher do this get her attention and it's again it's not like across the board for all dogs but in this situation where she's like woohoo just be fair and and really just try to set her up for success good heel uh, yeah i know well i know sit okay break that's a good girl Good girl. So see how it's like completely black and white. There's no like, are we healing or are we not? Make it really clear for her so she's so she really understands it. All right, guys, we're wrapping up here at the the cool mall here. Uh, everybody did really good. No insecurities, no outbreaks, no no worries. Really, the the owners are really happy with the progress that we've made so far, and the dogs are super happy. You can totally tell. Especially Liv, you know, she she suffers from really bad insecurity issues. She came here, jumped on things. Her tail was wagging. Her body language was good. Was good. Her owners were really surprised. I was pretty surprised too but so now we're gonna head over to Home Depot which has been a really tough place for Liv to go to she shuts down every time for what we were told from what we were told um, so we're gonna head over there and see how she does at Home Depot Liv what you think it's not so bad it's not so bad out here. Here, let's 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 do a let's see if she'll get up in the mulch. 
Oh yeah, there. Monkey see, monkey do. There's a good girl. There's a good girl. See, Home Depot's not so bad. Go ahead and bring her right to me. All right. Um, so I think overall, I think that they both did really good. I think you saw some, some really good changes really fast. You guys just have to practice like, you know, everything from now on. Um, but Liv came from not being able to go into Home Depot to going into Home Depot and doing fine. Like she's like any other dog. She, she's like, okay, I don't know why the heck we're here, but we're here. She's not trying to run away. She's not going to the bathroom on herself. She's not plopping on the ground. Um, and then with her, just you know, continuing to work on your healing and your timing and everything. All right guys, so episode number two and day two was a success. We got into Home Depot and these guys did just, just awesome. So confidence is up on both ends from the owner and the dogs. The obedience and the training is up. Uh, but more importantly, the dogs are happy. The people are happy. They have a better understanding of each other, which is my whole goal. Again, I'm here to just help these guys better understand their dogs. And today we were able to do that with these guys in a short time. So I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I'm very grateful for you guys here watching. If you haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We'll be dropping tons of videos in the next couple months. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you next time. Peace.